So how are you feeling about doing this interview? Oh, I don't know. No, no issues, really. I mean, it's uh, something I've lived with for a long time. Take a deep breath. How do you sleep at night? <laughs> On a bed, uncomfortably, for about four hours at a time. I would average less than two hours a night. For about the first six months, I hardly slept. Even in one night, I would try to go back to sleep half a dozen times. The nightmare would just pick up exactly where I left it off. Tried sleeping tablets, they didn't work. I have a cigarette, doesn't work. The cigarettes were the go-to, 50 a day at that stage. I would sit in bed and just stare at the ceiling and just scream because I feel trapped. I do a lot of thinking when I'm supposed to shut down. You're going through that moment over and over again. When you do the head moles and you start thinking about things that aren't even real. And it's like, fuck, what if only I did that? And if only I did that? What if I didn't answer the phone call? What could I have done different? What if I turned the car slightly this way? What if I, you know, what if I didn't accelerate as hard? If there had been a two second gap, then we would have avoided it. You're second guessing yourself all the time. I think it hit me when I got home. I did um, nine months of the two and a half years uh, with parole. There was that sense of, oh yeah, cool, I can go forward my life, but then it led me to the question of, what do I do now? It was three months of fetal position, not knowing where I belong, what I should do. For a long time, I was just existing. So to have people there forcing you to have something to eat to sustain yourself, it's. I guess it's really important. I couldn't watch TV. I didn't want to see papers. I didn't want to hear the news. If you see something similar on TV, you think about it, you think about it, you think about it. And you never know where a trigger's going to come from. Could be anything, a song, could be the butterfly, could be a car. Every time I cross a bridge, I think of it, every time. Little redheads, you go out to the pool and you see a little redhead running around. Like this little boy would have been 19 now. And how would he have grown up? What would have he been like? How tall would he be? What would he look like? Yeah. I remember about six months afterwards um, shopping and this lady came round the top of the aisle, her child walking next to her. She goes, oh, watch out, that lady's going to hit you. <laughs> and I just lost it. In the middle of the shopping centre, I'm sobbing my heart out and this poor woman had no idea and I had to leave the shopping trolley and run. Like, I don't want to be here. I shake, I get scared, I have major anxiety. Sometimes I vomit. You're not the same person as you were two days ago beforehand. How could you be? Even now, if I see anyone running as pedestrians, I freeze, I want to vomit. I always put it down as like a PTSD thing. You know it's always going to be there, you're always that sort of like a little bit scarred. The picture's the moment that it, that it happened. That's a frozen moment. And it's just a part of me. It's always there, it's always in the back of my mind. It defines me. How do you live with that picture is the main one hanging on your lounge room wall.